beautiful plant people, my name is Yana. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to take care of plants as simply as possible, see what plants are in my collection as well as unbox plants with me and other planty things, then please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further planty content. Alright guys, so you know what today is. Welcome to my jungle or manicure jungle. Today we're doing my fall 2020 house plant tour. I hope you like this video. No, all my plants are not perfect at this time, but I still try really hard to maintain the look of my plants and to keep them in the best health possible. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions, leave those for me and I will be glad to help you and answer those questions. So let's get into it. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so I'm going to start this tour by giving you guys an overview of the space and what my area looks like now. If you watched any of my previous tours, like my spring or summer tours, you'll notice that one major difference is that I no longer have my shelves. I had taken down my shelves for multiple reasons. One being that my plants were getting larger and I felt like, you know, my shelves weren't able to take on the weight of some of my plants. As well as I, was, I felt like I was not maximizing enough area with all the pots that I had. So we did go ahead and ixnay some of the shelves. No, I didn't get rid of them. They are outside, but I'm currently not using them to host the majority of my plants. All right, so starting here as usual, we have my snake plant. I'm not sure if this plant was here before, but I did go ahead and put it here. There's my Buddha. Here we have my big ZZ plant. This plant never lets me down, it's old faithful. I kind of use it to kind of mask the alarm system in the back, but that's my ZZ plant. I think I've had this plant for as long as I've been collecting plants, so about two or three years now. Here I have my Lucky Red Aglionema, which is doing much better now. And I was able to go ahead and pot it deeper into the soil. This is what she looks like, very beautiful. She's a very beautiful plant. That is the only plant I have on my desk at this time. Over here is one of the main sections that I changed on my space. Get you a good overview of that area. All right, so my first plant here is my Syndapsis exotica. This plant really likes it in this area. It's getting a ton more light and is even putting out more silver leaves. I have my Raphidophora tetrasperma. If you saw my Monstera collection video that I uploaded yesterday, this plant was featured in that video. It is it just enjoying the light that's coming in this corner. And I do have my grow light shining on it as well. Since I took my shelves off, I didn't get rid of my lights. I am repurposing my lights and my mom was able to go ahead and just clip it onto this pot so that we found a genius way of repurposing my lights so that way I didn't have to get rid of them or buy new lights. Right here is my Philodendron pedatum. I got this plant off of Etsy and it is growing really well. This is one of the latest leaves. Pretty nice size. It is growing a new leaf here, as well as one down here, if you can see that. So I have this one climbing up a moss pole and it's doing really well. I really do enjoy this plant. It doesn't give me a lot of issue or hard times. We move over, this is my Philodendron Birkin. I got this one from Gabriella Plants. I haven't had the best luck with Gabriella plants, but this one is doing a lot better than it was. So that's um, up close shots of this plant. Down here I have my Philodendron Gloriosum. 
This one did get attacked by thrips, but it seems to be doing a lot better. And this is the newest leaf that it put out. It's very beautiful. And next to that, I have my philodendron golden dragon. This was one of my green spaces ID plants. And if, if I'm able to, I'll go ahead and try to link all the videos where I got these plants from. But this is just a beautiful leaf. And it has a slight amount of variegation on the leaves as well. Next to that, I have my Monstera Celtipicana, also featured in the video put up yesterday. I did have this one on the moss pole in my last video, but I did go ahead and take it off because, of course, I'm indecisive and I can never make up my mind. But for now, I'm going to have a salad bowl of Monstera Celtipicana. This is my Syndapsis Moonlight. This is a very beautiful plant. I've had this one for about a year and it is putting out really nice growth. Syndapsis are really nice plants to have if you're a beginner and you want something different but comes in multiple variations. I would always recommend the Syndapsis. Here I have my Anthurium clarinervium. This was its last leaf that it put out. It's a really nice shaped leaf, if you can see that there. This was the leaf before it. So it is putting out nice sized leaves, as well as I'm getting another one right there. And it even has an inflorescence. So having the inflorescence does not stop the growth that comes in. You just have to make sure that when the new leaves are coming in, that you are watering it so that way it can be able to support the growth. This is my Melanochrysum varicosum cross, another green space ID plant. This plant is absolutely beautiful. This was the last leaf that came out. Just gorgeous. I might have to either put it on a bigger moss pole or go ahead and cut it back. I haven't really made up my mind yet, but we'll see how that goes when I get to that point. Here's my ZZ Akibono from New Life Tropicals. It's doing pretty well. Hasn't given me any growth, but I did just get it. And then over here, we have my Monstera Stamiana. You can see that there is new growth here. It's very beautiful. I have this one on the moss pole as well. And this plant is about 16 or <laughs> six feet tall. So that is what that plant looks like. As you can see, if you give the plant more light, you do get longer leaves. And then those are what the baby leaves look like as well as I have fixed another grow light to this area so that way these plants in this area get light. But going back over here, this is my Syngonium macrophyllum, also attached to a bamboo. This plant is really tall. I call this my Jack and the Beanstalk plant. But as you can see, it's really enjoying the light. And this is one of its newest leaves pretty nice size size of my hand but this is very beautiful I want to chop it but I'm just I don't know I go back and forth here is my philodendron billetier another new life tropical plant And here's the newest leaf that it put out. Very easy, very beginner friendly. This is my Philodendron Burrow Marks. I got this plant off of Etsy and 
This plant came to me as seven cuttings, I believe. And I'm, I also saw this plant a couple weeks later at Pepper's Greenhouse, and I was so tempted to buy this plant. It was a gallon container size, and I'm so glad that I didn't buy this size plant because this is a result of the seven cuttings, and this is just from the growth from May. So I can't imagine how big that the other one would have been if I had gotten the bigger size, but this is a super fast growing plant. You can see all the newer leaves in here with all the light green leaves are the new ones. Here is my black velvet alocasia. This plant is putting out really big leaves. I'm trying to give it more light so that way I don't have such long petioles as you see here. So I stuck it in the windowsill. It was on my plant shelf if you saw the last tour. But this plant is doing really well. I think it has five leaves. This is the Alocasia fry deck. Also doing pretty good. It did get attacked by thrips as you can see some damage here. But it's doing a lot better. I'm going to do a video on thrips if the spray that I just bought is works well. I have really good feeling about it but I just want to use it a little bit longer before I let you guys know. And this one, do you guys remember what this plant was? This was my huge begonia tamaya. I will go ahead and put in a picture of what it looked like, but this is what it looks like now. I gave it a huge chop, if you can see there. But it's already getting new growth, if you can see this. It's already putting out tons of new growth. It also got attacked by thrips and the leaves were so beautiful on the end, but this plant was taking up so much space in the window that it was blocking all of this light from reaching other plants. So I did go ahead and make the decision to go ahead and chop it. And ever since I chopped it, so much more light is coming into this room. And here is my Alocasia Maharani. Also doing pretty well, I'm trying to give it more light as with the black velvet to get shorter petioles. But this one is doing really well. The texture on this plant is unreal. And I don't get a lot of spider mite issues, but that is what this area looks like. All right, so now I'm gonna give you guys an overview of this area, just so you can see what it looks like. Let me know if you guys like it better without the shelves, with shelves or without shelves. All right, so here is my Monstera adansonii. She's doing pretty well. She did have a bout with thrips, but she's looking a lot better. And then if we move over here, this is my other big boy. This is my philodendron McDowell. If you saw what happens when plants get big, this plant was featured in that video. And this is what the leaves look like. This is the newest leaf. It's still kind of unfurling. You see it's not as big as the other leaves, but it's still a nice size for coming indoors. I think this was the this was the second to last newest leaf. It's a really nice size. I had this plant outside all summer and that's why it has such big leaves. This was the last leaf. I can get that in frame. That's what that looks like. So as you see this plant really enjoyed being outside. This was the leaf that came in prior to being outside so you see that it's a lot smaller compared to the other leaves. Down here I have my whale fin snake plant. It's putting out a new pup for me. Finally, I'm trying to give it more light to see if I can get more growth out of it. This plant here is my 
champion bird's nest fern. And this is one of the plants that I got from Terrain, if you saw that nursery tour. I was kind of keeping it, not a secret, but I was waiting to do, show this plant just because it would be so close to my plant tour. But the, here is what that plant looks like. It looks a lot different than my other bird's nest fern. And I just could not pass this plant up when I walked by it. It made me do a double take. Here is my ruby rubber tree. I got this from the plant farm on Etsy. It's doing really well, put out a lot of growth. I think when I first got it, it was up to here. So it's put out quite a bit of growth this summer. And this is my monster subpanata. Reminds me of a bamboo palm. And I love this plant very much. If we look kind of in the back, this is my Monstera Peru. As you can see, it's growing off the moss pole, so I tried to wrap some of the, the branches around to see how I like that, but I may ended up just propagating that off. But this is the texture and what the leaves look like. So pretty. This plant is also very tall if I take a step back. But as you can see, it's not as full as I would like it, but it is growing really well. And over here, we have my Jade Syngonium from Steve's Leaves. One of the few Steve Leaves plants that's actually doing me justice right now. This plant is doing really well. Over here is my monster Electriana. I try to get out of the glare, but that's what these leaves look like. They're a nice size leaf. This plant's doing pretty well. I'm either going to have to chop it or give it a bigger moss pole. But as you can see, it's putting out new growth here. And here is my Adapapawensi. This is probably one of my easiest plants in my collection. I got this one from Green Space ID as well. This plant drinks a lot of water though. But it kind of makes sense from the size of these leaves. Like these leaves are pretty big. I can try to... And I just watered it today, but it drinks so much water. This is why this one's a little curled because it just got some water but it puts out the nicest leaves. And as you can see, the backing is very burgundy. It's a very beautiful plant. Here is my Monstera Thai Constellation. I'm showing this plant off before I give a cutting to my mom for her birthday. Here's my newest leaf here. And I believe this was my last leaf. This plant is very beautiful. These are shipping leaves. I don't cut those off even if they don't look the best. But this plant has grown very well. That's what that one looks like. And here's my burgundy rubber tree, also doing really well. I love how shiny these leaves get when they come in. I don't use any leaf shine because I find that it clogs the pores of leaves and then I end up getting spots on the leaves so I stopped doing that. But I can't wait till this new bud comes out. I'm very excited to see that. And down here we have my Philodendron Squamiferum. This plant is absolutely gorgeous. You can see that the leaves are definitely getting a lot bigger. The petioles are pretty short, which means it's getting a good amount of light, although I'm not sure because I just moved it here, but it was getting a good amount of light where it was before. It was just getting too tall for the area. And then this is the newest leaf that it put out. So that's a nice, more mature leaf. And here is my Philodendron Mexicanum. As you can see, it's still a juvenile plant. 
it does have a new leaf coming here but this is doing really well and this is the last new the last leaf that it put out this one also drinks a ton of water but that's what that one looks like here is my struggle buster let me see if you can get a view of this one so this is the plant that is struggling for me. This is my philodendron mammy. This did not do well when it got attacked by thrips. As you can see, this damage here. I did go ahead and propagate. And that's why you see the different buds that are coming out here, here. And this is a newer leaf, which is looking really well, but I don't wanna jinx it. But let's pray there's no damage on this leaf. But yeah, this is my struggle buster. It doesn't look that bad, but it doesn't look that good either. Behind that is my Aglionema sparkling Sarah, always doing really well. Loves being under the grow light. Is putting out this super bright leaf here. But that is just a beautiful plant. Over here I have my other bird's nest fern. As you can see, there is a big difference between this one and the other one but this one really is enjoying this grow light and is more upright than it was before. So I know it's enjoying the light as well as the syndapsis over here that's growing more upright. But this is my syndapsis argyreus. And then I have my Agvionema cutlass. And then, of course, we have the big boy. This is my Monstera Deliciosa. I've had this plant for about two years. This plant is absolutely beautiful. It's got a ton of new leaves, as you can see there. Over here and up there. It's really enjoying this sandy light. All the lights over here are sandy lights, so it's really enjoying this light. But this is a big boy, which is why he's always like in the corner because there's no other space for him. And this is my asparagus fern. She is growing wild and crazy. I'm sorry these sandy lights are so bright that you can't really see. This is the newest frond that it put out. That one's doing really well. So we'll come and show you an overview of this area. This is liable to change. I'm always changing my areas, so you <laughs> might come back and this will be changed again. Over here, we have my Stanleyana variegata. I do have cuttings of this in, a, in my propagation area, and I'm gonna plot it back into this when they have long roots, but that's what that one looks like. It grew super huge over the summer, and, and I didn't like the lanky look, so I chopped it back all the way to the bottom. And this is my Refitifora decursiva, one of my favorite plants in my collection. My mom was a cutting of this plant, so I'm going to give her a little piece of it so she can start it in her collection. But this plant is just simply gorgeous. I love the way it looks. You do have to get this one started early if you want to put it on the moss pole because the stems do get thick and rigid and it's hard to maneuver. This is another twin snake plant that I have. I have the other one in my room, but this one is definitely growing wild and crazy, but I love it. Here I have my Anthurium pendifolium and this is one of its newer leaves here. If you can see that, that's how big the leaf is. This was its last leaf over here. 
that's pointing down. So as you can see, it's getting a lot bigger compared to leaves it came with, which are the ones that are pointing up. But this plant is doing really well. It was requested to do an anthurium video. I've had a lot better luck with my anthuriums and they are growing a lot better than for me than they were before. So I'm going to do a video on those show you guys my care and how I get those to grow well for me and here although this is very bright let me see if I can move this this is my philodendron Florida ghost oh the leaves are too bright let's see all right there we go this is my philodendron Florida ghost and it's really maintaining the white leaves really well I was really surprised that it still has white leaves because a lot of people see that their leaves fade to green, but mine have yet to do that. So I'm interested to see how long this maintains its white leaves. Over here we have my tri-set coffee table, and this is what that looks like. This is my money tree that I got from Lowe's so cute and just dwarf like and then over here is my foxtail fern that I got from the terrain so beautiful and my Ming fern you probably think that they look the same but they're not the same fern this foxtail fern is more dense than this Ming fern and when the foxtail fern grows, you'll really be able to see the difference because it'll become a lot more dense. But that is what that area looks like. I think it looks super cute there. All right, so as we come into my bathroom, I haven't shown my bathroom in my previous tours. So I do keep this these lights on. I have LED lights in my fixtures and I do keep them on for about 12 hours just so these plants can have light so they're not sitting in the dark. But this is my mini Sansevieria Banco, my ZZ Zenzi, and this is from Groovy Ranch Plants, as well as my Bentel Sensation Sansevieria from Etsy. I had to reroute this plant because it was constantly shriveling up and I didn't know why. So I took a look at the roots and it basically had none, so I rerouted it in water and it's doing a lot better. As we come over here, I have my Moonshine Sansevieria, my Fernwood Sansevieria. It's actually putting out some growth in the middle. And my Night Owl Sansevieria. So these are doing pretty well in here. I just want a little bit of green in my bathroom because it was kind of boring with all the beiges. As you can see, I have a lot of beiges in my bathroom. And you can see my shower curtain. It's a macrame curtain. Look at Sage. So you can see why I put some, some greenery in here. Okay, on to the bedroom. In one of the last areas, we'll give you an overview. This is my propagation area. This is the northwest window. And my northeast window. Meditation corner. And entertainment section. Alright, so let's get started. Here is my Syngonium Frost. Got this from New Life Tropicals. This plant tends to run for over $100 in the US. So I did figure I'd give it a try and order it from uh, Thailand and it came in pretty good condition. This is this newest leaf here that it put out. Next to it is the Syngonium Chia Pence which is similar to this one, but it's not frosted. This is its newest leaf. 
I'm glad this one is a lot smaller than my philodendron macrophyllum because I I don't think I'd be able to have two big you know bean stalks and here is my Syngonium pink splash it's doing really well it's getting fuller I did take a cutting of this one because it was getting tall and I kind of want it to be a little bit more full this needs to be bumped up to an 8 inch pot but I'm waiting for the cutting to root so that way I can just pot it in a bigger pot this plant here is my model tingonium from Steve's Leaves this plant gave me a lot of difficulty it was growing really well and then it got hit with thrips and it just did not want to come back but these are some cuttings I took off the main plant and it is doing a lot better I'm really enjoying these mottled leaves this is also known as Syngonium Army this is this new leaf that it's putting out here it feels hot as you can tell the texture is different here because this is the mottled area so you can kind of tell what kind of variegation you're going to get before the leaf unfurls because as you see the mottled leaves are more textured than you know just the green and then here I have my cuttings for my Stanleyana variegata just waiting for those to get roots so that way I can pot them back and more cuttings as you can see this one is developing roots faster there are some cuttings of my Syngonium Pink Splash and my Monstera Subpinata. Over here, this is my Philodendron Mykins. I chopped it all the way up because it got thrips and I didn't like the way it was looking afterwards, so I'm starting over. Here is my Monstera Celtipicana cuttings. This plant grows so fast, I'm always taking cuttings, and that's why I'm, I'm always perplexed as to why people sell those to be so expensive because they grow super fast. This is my Syngonium Erythophyllum Carto Road. This is also from, no, this is from the Black Jungle. It's doing really well. It's putting out a ton of new growth. And here is my Syngonium Rei. This looks a lot different than other people's radii. It's really dark compared to the other ones I see online. I think I got this from the Black Jungle as well. Here I have my, my Syndapsis Dark Form. This is from Unsolicited Plant Talks. It's putting out a couple new leaves. As you can see, this is kind of my dark section of plants. I don't have too many dark plants. I have my little fan. Fans are so important for air circulation. So if you have air voids, make sure you get a fan or two. This is my Syngonium Aretum. This is from eBay. I really love this plant. This is one of my favorite Syngoniums of all time. I love how big the leaves are coming out and just how full it's going to be. I'm really excited for this plant. Up here is my second struggle buster. This is my uh, Philodendron varicosum. This does not do well against pests. But you can see those leaves are a nice size, but they're just looking really damaged. This is the newest leaf that's coming out. Here is my Philodendron Nangutense. This plant is doing pretty well. I love the big lily pad shape of the leaves. And then the petiole kind of looks like pop rocks. Here is my Syngonium Winlandii. This plant is doing okay. I don't, I'm not really liking how long the petioles are. Those were kind of like the older leaves but it's doing pretty good here's my philodendron palmanii i really do like this plant 
and how shiny the leaves are. This new leaf is coming out really good. And this was the biggest leaf on this plant. So this is two plants in one pot. This is one plant here and then another plant here. So there's two in this pot. That's why there's two points of growth. Here is my Anthurium regale. This plant is doing pretty well. I did cut off the older leaf because it, did, it started to not look too well. So I did chop that one off. This plant loves water. All my Anthuriums drink a lot of water. But this one will let you know when it needs more water because it will really start to droop. This one is my Ring of Fire. This is a gorgeous plant. If I can get some shots here. I love the splashiness of the variegation. It's a really pretty plant. My mom wants a cutting of this one, but um, we'll see. <laughs> but this one is really nice. I love this plant. It's from Green Spaces as well. Here is my Philodendron Sororia finis. I got this from Equigenera. This plant was struggling a little bit, but this new leaf makes me feel like a good plant mom and that we're on the right track. And here is my Taniki. This plant is growing super fast. And I love the variegation on these leaves. They look painted on. So as you can see, this leaf is a pretty nice size leaf as well as this one. But you can see this one is a lot smaller because this is the leaf that came out when I moved it inside, so it's not as big. So you can see the difference in leaf size from outside between it being outside and then inside. But I still love it. This is my El Chaco Red. If you saw this, the video when I showed this plant, this was just a stump. And now look at it. It has two leaves now. So this one's doing pretty well. So now it's a stump with two leaves. <laughs> and a new growth point here. But that one's doing a lot better. I'm so happy that I was able to save that one. Here is my Syngonium Albo. This plant just keeps growing and growing. I had to go ahead and nip tuck it because it was getting to be too, it was splaying out too much. But you can see it's putting out new leaves all over and I love the variegation. I always have different forms of variegation. I get all white leaves. And he has another new leaf here. I found that if you have all white leaves on this one, or if you have leaves that have a lot of white, that it helps to put it in like a east facing window or like a west facing window. That way you can maintain the white a lot longer. So if you have a lot of white leaves, just put it in the area of more light and that plant will be able to maintain those white leaves a lot longer and that goes for a lot of variegated plants here is my anthurium my queen anthurium she hasn't put out a leaf for me per se but there is a lot of growth happening in there we got some roots and some new growth so hopefully she'll put a leaf out for me soon she hasn't crisped up so that's always a good thing as well this is my philodendron fibrosum. I did cut off the older leaves and it shot out this one and it's looking so much better than when it did when it got shipped to me. So I'm excited for that. That is my anthurium metallicum doing pretty well. Also a, a major water sucker. If we move over to this side, this is my philodendron squamacaulay. It did have another leaf on there, but I cut it off because it started to yellow. And so sometimes you had to cut off your bad looking leaves so the new one comes out nice and strong. This is my Anthurium forgettii. This is its last leaf that it put out. It's a really big leaf. And this is the new one that it's working on. 
So this one definitely doesn't give me any trouble. I really love this plant. This one is starting to yellow, but I don't cut these leaves off until it's like 50%, you know, damaged. So this is still a good leaf. It's still able to produce, you know, chlorophyll and everything like that. So I don't cut them off. This is my variegated burl marks. Very beautiful. This is his first variegated leaf that it gave me. So this one's doing really well. I'm also trying to give this one more light to go ahead and maintain the variegated leaves. And then this is my Anthurium vichii, which is finally putting out a new leaf here. But that one's doing really well. So then we're gonna come over here. This is my Aglonema anemiae. I found this one at Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm not really sure which one. This is the Philodendron Heartleaf. I love these plants. I'll do stick the vines back in there so I can get a more full plant, but I can't wait till it trails. This is the neon version of the Heartleaf. And that's how that looks there. If we come over here, I have another philodendron heart leaf. And this one is trailing. Here is my syndapsis silvery in. You can see this one has a lot more silver than the syndapsis argirius. I got half of this plant from an Etsy shop called the Land of Alice. Here is my Aglianema Pink Moon. It's putting out good leaves at a good rate. And this is the new leaf here. As you can see, it's varying shades of pink on the spine. But I really do enjoy this plant. I can't wait till it gets bigger like the one I had before. If we come back here, I have my chocolate aglionema, which is my favorite aglionema. I have plans for these aglionemas in the future. I'll do a video on my goals and plans for my collection for 2021. Here is the beautiful syndapsis from Gabriella's plant. I got this plant and only half of it was rooted, so I had to root half of the plant and pot it back in the pot. But this one is growing really well now. There's my other twin, Sansevieria, also enjoying the sun over here. And then this is my Aglunema Silver Stripes. Got this new growth coming in here. I like having the greenery next to my bed. Then if we come over here, I have my collection, some more ferns. This is a tiny fern that I got from the terrain. This is a maidenhair fern. I have the crispy wave fern from the terrain. I got this one simply just because of this curly leaf here, because I already have one, but I saw this curly leaf and I just, I wanted it. <laughs> Here I have a staghorn fern that I got from the terrain. Here's my other staghorn fern. This is the one I had in my collection prior to. I got this one from eBay. And as you can see, it's starting to put out its shields. This one is developing quite a bit of shields but it is beautiful. If you guys have a chance to get a staghorn fern, I highly recommend them. They are such good plants. And then here I have another staghorn fern. That's just how much I really like these plants. They're just so easy and when they need to be watered, these leaves get soft. In the future, I would love to mount these on some cedar boards, but we'll see how that goes. Here I have my first crispy wave ferns. 
I really love this plant. I love how it grows. It's just so cute. And another maiden hair fern. I'm just testing these out to see how they do in my collection. I've never had a fine fern, and I know that they give people difficulty, but you know. I did get these liners from the Dollar Tree to try to protect my windowsill because as you can see, the terracotta pots have marked up my window. And then up here we have my string of heart collection. I am bad with these plants. I do pretty much neglect these plants, but this is my green version, my variegated, the silver glory, and another green one. But I'll try to see if you can There we go. As you can see, they're doing pretty well. They're not my favorite plants in my collection, if I'm being honest. But they're doing pretty good. The only thing I don't like about these plants is that they get so tangled. But you probably won't be able to see these because it's so backlit. There we go. I always forget these plants over here. This is my Hoya Linearis. I moved this one to a terracotta pot. It wasn't a plastic pot that wasn't holding enough water, so I moved it to terracotta and put a lot more soil in there. And now it's holding a lot more water in the pot. This plant, I don't think I was watering enough. As you can see by that section there, that's kind of bare. So I am making a note to water this one more often. It was really dry but I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. I'm gonna also propagate it to get a much fuller plant. But this one does like more water than the other Hoya varieties. And this is my Deschidia ovata that's doing really well. I don't know if you'll be able to see this one, but this one's doing super well. It has grown so much since being in this window. I basically neglect this one because the first one I had, I overwatered it, so this one I'm being very gentle with. Alright, and that is all the plants in this area. I'm going to give another once over so you can see how I have these plants. This is my Syngonium slash propagation area. Plants that need a little bit more light because they're either higher light or they have variegations and then we have my ferns and strings of hearts and my low light buddies all right so that is what my plant collection looks like right now i really hope you guys enjoyed my plant tour i tried to give you little blurbs about each plant where i got it from how it's doing uh, i am wanting to make a goals and plans video i'm really excited to share that video with you guys and explain to you my vision for my plant collection for 2021 but again like i said i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i want to thank you so much for liking my videos subscribing to my channel and commenting in the comment section as always i will throw up another planty comment and I really just want to thank all my new and old subscribers. I really love talking to you guys. I love talking to you guys in the comment section and on Instagram. I respond to all my comments. And I will see you guys in the next video when I record my mom's plant tour. So stay tuned. Bye.